uh, for the past couple of minutes, it has been clear from this uh, space back on Chambers in that area. So now they're walking back toward the World Trade Center. And as we keep letting you hear the personal stories, the survivor stories of exactly what happened inside the World Trade Center when that first plane went in, and of course the collapses since then, we're going to bring more of those to you now. Barry Jennings, you're on the eighth floor. You work for the city housing department. Explain to me the moment of impact. Well, me and Mr. Hess, the Corporation Council, were on the 23rd floor. I told them we got to get, get out of here. We started walking down the stairs. We made it to the eighth floor. Big explosion. Blew us back into the eighth floor. And I turned to Hesh. I, I said, this is it. We're dead. We're, we're not going to make it out of here. I took uh, a fire extinguisher and I bust the window out. That's when this gentleman, this gentleman here heard my cries for help. This gentleman right here. And he said, kept, kept saying, stand by. Somebody's coming to get you. They, could, they couldn't get to us for an hour because they couldn't find us. You thought that was it? I thought, I thought we're dead. I thought that was it. I, I started praying to Allah. I said, that's it. We're gone. It's well, over. What was it like for you? You were inside there as well. It was pandemonium. I mean, it was something like out of... Uh, Bruce Willis Die Hard movie. Uh, he was there and he was crying, and there was another gentleman crying and, and for help. We couldn't get to him. We tried to get through the. Uh, we, we went through the buildings. We were lost. Both staircases. The, the backside was completely blown away. There was no way to access us. We couldn't get to him. And finally, uh, one of the one of the fire department teams found him. But uh, we didn't think we didn't think they were going to make it. Well, certainly you got out. Many others didn't. Of course, we don't have a number right now of fatalities or injuries, but I want to translate a story to you that another man told me. He was near the building. He was on the lobby level, near the shopping area, near the promenade. The elevator doors, he said to me, blew open. And when the doors opened, there was a man on fire inside that elevator. That is the kind of tragedy we are talking about here and where the World Trade Center... Ladies and gentlemen, this is a major attack, not only upon the United States of America, but upon freedom. The outcome of this will redefine the word, and I suspect that freedom will no longer mean what it used to mean after this day. It will probably be redefined as freedom is whatever the law allows you to do. Rights are going to disappear, ladies and gentlemen. You see, I'm going to tell you this. When I was in the United States Air Force, this could not have happened. We had fighter planes on alert all over this country that would intercept and shoot down, if necessary, any aircraft that was flying in an airspace where it was not supposed to be or that was flying into this country unidentified. That was taken care of through NORAD, North American Air Defense Command, out of Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado. Apparently, we no longer have that fighter air protection in this country, and uh, one of the reasons why might have been so that something like this could happen. This is another step toward world totalitarian socialist government, and the outcome, the offshoot, I can guarantee you. It's going to be legislation and laws. So, and, and I have no idea who carried this out, uh, but I know exactly why uh, these attacks were launched. Uh, they need excuses, uh, ladies and gentlemen, not just here, but worldwide, to continue to pass laws to strip people of their rights and of their freedoms and to disarm people in order to bring the world under the umbrella of a world totalitarian socialist government. As you see, it's what's left of a 40-story building. A 40-story building. Guys, grab some of the plane. The truck. Has anybody used an engine? The mail truck. 511 apparatus. And now we're being bombarded with messages that Osama bin Laden is planning to attack the United States of America and Israel. And I'm telling you, be prepared for a major attack. But it won't be Osama bin Laden 
It will be those behind the New World Order. Can you believe what you have been seeing on CNN today, ladies and gentlemen? Can you believe it? (laughs) Supposedly, a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden took a television camera crew with him, went into Osama bin Laden's hideout, interviewed him and his top leadership, his top lieutenants and colonels and generals in their hideout. This is a CNN reporter with a camera crew. And he came out and told everybody, within three weeks, Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel. Now, don't you think that's kind of strange, folks? You see, because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world, with the biggest budget in the history of the world, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years, and can't find him. The FBI also, under the leadership of Louis Free, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years and years and years and many years, and can't find him. Some doofus, jerk-off reporter with a camera crew waltzes right into his hideout and interviews him. And you know what his budget is? (laughs) Zip, zilch, nothing. Now, that tells us two things. Either everyone in the intelligence community and all of the intelligence agencies of the United States government are blithering idiots and incompetent fools, including the entire apparatus of the FBI and all of their personnel, or they're lying to us. They're not looking for him at all. And the second is the truth. You see, the CIA created Osama bin Laden. They recruited him. They trained him. They found his leadership. They brought them all together. They showed him them how to fight the Soviet Union in Afghanistan. And when that was over, they still continued to fund him and train him. And they're now using him to help bring about world government by making him the big boogeyman because they can't use Saddam Hussein anymore. Did you ever hear of Osama bin Laden before you heard of Saddam Hussein? When did you start hearing of Osama bin Laden? It was after Saddam Hussein and Iraq were supposedly neutralized in the Gulf War because they needed a new boogeyman. A reporter from CNN and his little camera crew got in to Osama bin Laden's secret hideout and conducted an interview. If you don't believe me, tune into CNN. They're probably running it right now as I'm speaking. And if you believe it, you are one of the stupidest jerks that ever lived on the face of this earth. And whatever is going to happen that they're going to blame on Osama bin Laden, don't you even believe it. Another social illusion, social engineering project to change the minds and the attitudes and the beliefs of the people of the world, and especially the United States, to bring about one world socialist totalitarian government. The CIA, the NSA, the FBI, the Defense Intelligence Agency could not find Osama bin Laden in their wildest dreams. But Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols could and recruit him to be their partner in blowing up the Alfred P. Muir Federal Building. Bullshit! How stupid can you be? These guys didn't have a nickel between them. Not a nickel between them. How dumb can you be? How stupid can you be? So why why do all these fools believe this charade? That a CNN reporter and his little camera crew can do what all the money and all the assets and all the eavesdropping and all the intelligence and all the satellites and all the undercover operatives in the world can never do. It's because they're not trying. They don't want to. Osama bin Laden is their creation, and he is serving them well. When in hell are all you people going to wake up? Are you kidding me? I mean, is this some kind of incredible joke that people are so stupid they'll fall for this? Do you know how much money the CIA 
and the National Security Agency and the FBI has at its disposal each year? Do you know how many agents they have that they can devote to this? Do you realize the technology that they have to be able to eavesdrop on every single conversation in the world, no matter how it's transmitted, and pinpoint the location of every one of those transmissions? And they can't find Osama bin Laden, but some CNN reporter... He just waltzes right on in there with his camera crew, just like he knew where they were all the time. Bet you it was the CIA that sent him there. <laughs> they told him where he was. And, of course, they know where he is because they created him. They're the ones that are funding him and backing him and helping him. I wonder what Osama bin Laden's targets are supposed to be. And if they don't, you know, if this doesn't materialize in the next two or three weeks, it will eventually materialize. And so I can tell you with a certainty, they must do something terrible in order to stop this backlash and regain the sympathy of the mass herds of sheeple out there. And supposedly, we're not the only nation searching for Osama bin Laden. So the vast economic resources, the vast technological resources, the vast personnel resources, the vast networks and intricate web spun over all these years by the CIA, the FBI, and the NSA. Can't find Osama bin Laden, but CNN can? Bullshit. Bill Cooper was murdered by the police in front of his home while they were serving a subpoena for tax evasion. This happened immediately after 9-11. We can only guess where his family is now. And whatever is going to happen that they're going to blame on Osama bin Laden, don't you even believe it.